How's it going people? Jack here with another reaction here today to check out some more from the Act Man on Assassin's Creed Shadows and why that game it's uh so hated. Now, <laughs> this is a little bit of a point of contentions for me because there's quite literally only one point that can stand ground in this entire discussion and that is that ubisoft is an awful company and should not be trusted before you actually see the final product and no pre-order that's literally all there is to it ubisoft does not deserve the trust of any customer whatsoever even Assassin's Creed fans were still clinging to the fact that Mirage saved the franchise or whatever. I didn't play Mirage, so just to be a little bit honest here, technically didn't play it. I did try it during the one week that it was made free. Didn't like it. But <laughs> I know that some Mirage fans are going to say that, what? Are love, you anti back that, that now? <laughs> no, I'm not. It's all about how Ubisoft designed the game, the anti-consumer practices and quite literally just how bad they are at doing things. This is a company that does not want you to own games, that are creating pricings that make zero sense, who, mind you, falsely advertise a lot of their products in the past. Think of something like Far Cry 6. Remember that game? A game that broke all the rules of progression whatsoever, where within the first couple of hours you got a car all the weapons that you need to conquer the island and free people through your revolution. A game that was promoting such thing as riding a horse. What do you need a horse for when you have a car with multiple horsepower? Why do you need to explore more to gain more weapons when you quite literally have all the tools that you need to finish the game? Who even cares about progression when all that you are told to do now is to just literally create mayhem? Mayhem needs to have a purpose. That's what makes it fun. You can do all the crazy stuff once you've reached an end game. That's when it kind of feels rewarding. But that's not the point of my argument. That game, Far Cry 6, had a Game of the Year edition that included all of the DLCs. We are talking about the one with Vars, uh, the Far Cry Blood Dragon uh, DLC, all of the ones with the previous baddies. And this one was sold at $120 which was criminal because those DLCs are always like at half price, if not more, on any uh, stores that you can find out there. And even worse than that, they named it Game of the Year Edition, which is a title that is often given if a game wins such price, which Far Cry 6 never did. False advertisement. And Ubisoft got away with that. And this is what I'm talking about when you cannot trust that company. That should literally be the only point that stands in the discussion. Because once anybody starts talking about historical accuracy in Assassin's Creed, my guy or girl, what the fuck? Now, that's just my point, my opinion so far. We're about to hear what the Ackman has to say about this. So let's get into it. What's up, everybody? This oh. is the Samurai Man here. And today... All I'm gonna say is, uh, nice, very nice. And coincidentally enough, I was wearing glasses today, Jesus. Ubisoft recently announced their newest Assassin's Creed game. Shadows the Hedgehogs. Nothing personnel, kid. Can you believe it? This series is finally going to Japan. A setting fans We've have been, been wishing this for years. For years. And the reaction has been Entirely pleasant, unanimous praise. In fact, there is so little controversy to talk about that this is the end of the video. So thank you all for watching. Hope if you only. enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe to the Samurai Man for more awesome content. <laughs> the most disliked trailer in the series history. This hate that he's getting does not make any sense. Cringe. Yeah, Ubisoft is definitely rattling the cage with this one. Yeah, the end of that was some demon just time. Assassin's Creed Shadows, though. If you look at Ubisoft's channel, every video they're posting is getting mass disliked. Twitter has been going off, and the Wikipedia page for. I'm sorry. I need to watch this one here because uh, I could recognize the image of a guy who literally lives off of rage bait. Like many content creators to be fair but he mainly roams on that hellscape called twitter so i usually don't get to see anything that uh people like him post but let me see a page for has been going off 
Ubisoft tries to be woke, picks Yasuke, a black man who was treated like a novelty item in a racist way by Nobunaga and never did anything of note except surrender. That's not true, but what's the point of even arguing against that? Uh, name the game Assassin's Creed Shadows, invoking races of... Huh? What? I, 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 oh God. Cringe. The cringe. Oh Lord, the cringe. See, th this is an issue. The, the thing that I find to be kind of funny is that the anti-war crowd literally doesn't realize that they are literally the same thing as the people they are fighting against. They are fucking cringe, both of them. Yikes, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, Yasuke is one hell of a heavy shadow, that's for sure. Who's the racist now, book moralist? <laughs> for fuck's sake. And the Wikipedia page for the protagonist Yasuke is a fucking war zone right now. There's a lot of heated debate around Assassin's Creed Shadows right now, which is weird because the trailer itself looks pretty damn good visually. So something else must be going on. Something else is happening. It's a uh, sorry, I was just reminded of the descriptions of the first Europeans that made it from the Iberian Peninsula to Japan, uh, the, the Christian Jesuits that were there. <laughs> they were literally described as goblins and were shown around uh, the, the merchants that they were because they had guns and stuff like that. But like they were literally shown as showpieces to which I'm like, if you're gonna make this similar argument with Yasuke, who, in most of the literature that I've read about the guy at least, is described as looking like a black bull and strong as ten men, I'm like, I'm gonna take that instead of being called a goblin who has horse teeth. It, it, this is not me making things up. Hi, editing Jack here. So just wanted to clarify that I was not making some deliberate unsensitive remark just for the fun of it this is literally a description that you can find in uh, this book here or this uh, a document from the harvard uh, university on the east asian studies from that faculty where in this one called De deus destroy in chapter two is the description of the first arrival here it says that in the reign of mikado gonara no in a southern uh, barbarian trading vessel came to our shores. From this ship, for the first time, emerged an unnameable creature, somewhat similar in shape to a human being, but looking rather more like a long nosed goblin or the giant demon Mikoshi Noido. Upon close interaction, it was discovered that this was a being called Botaran. The length of his nose was the first thing which attracted attention. It was like a cone shell, although without his surface warts attached by suctions to his face his eyes were like large spectacles and their insides were yellow his head was small on his hand and feet he had long claws his height exceeded seven feet and he was black all over only his nose was red his teeth were longer than the teeth of a horse <laughs> His hair was mossy grey in colour, like it goes further and further and it is fucking brutal. Just to point out that zero gaijin were exempt from this type of descriptor and if I were to choose which one to go with, I might be going with the one that has less of a description like the likes of Yasuke. So something else must be going on, something else is happening and today we're going to take a more nuanced approach to honestly answer the question. Why are gamers upset with Assassin's Creed Shadows? Oh, Is right. everyone complaining about this game just gearing up for the next clan meeting? <laughs> Probably not, but I am. Maybe. See, there's a lot more to it than just a black samurai, you know? People are right to be skeptical of anything Ubisoft puts out these days. And that's reason number one. Ubisoft's yeah. reputation is kind of in the gutter. X Defiant, their supposed COD killer, is also seeing a high percentage of dislikes on their recent trailer. In fairness, okay, in the argument of fairness, if we're going with the nuanced takes here, the game had, what was it, 3 million players in these first couple of days? So it's not doing bad. 
despite the fact that he had a rough start all the way back in 2021 when it was announced, <laughs> which was kind of comical because everybody was saying that Tom Clancy is rolling in his grave, which rightfully so, they have been misusing that IP. Um, if they are doing good with a game, then credit to what credit is due, yet still. To a point that he made there about the trailers, one thing that always wins fans over is something that, for example, FromSoft has been doing. The right strategy of releasing the right footage at the right time. For example, with Shadow of the Year Tree that will be coming out in a few days. You get the gameplay trailer first, then a few months after, you get the cinematic. Because people care way more about knowing what the game is going to play like what it actually what actually matters and of course for the low nuts who like myself enjoy a lot we get to see the cinematics that have a bunch of implications as well so they are playing it well there this is something that perhaps ubisoft should learn from star wars outlaws same deal skull and bones the first quadruple a game and your ship has a stamina bar <laughs> so the dislikes on the shadows trailer is not like an isolated incident People aren't just upset with what they saw in the trailer, they're upset with everything Ubisoft has been doing recently. Like taking down online servers for this old racing game called The, the Crew. Crew. Yeah. Instead of allowing fans to host their own fan servers and keep playing the game, Ubisoft is instead removing it from people's digital libraries and rendering physical copies unplayable. And while they are not the only ones who do this, plenty have also done that. Valve took away Spec Ops The Line. Alpha Protocol was one that I actually downloaded a couple of days ago because, uh, yeah, pre preserve digital media that you might never get access to again. So, yeah, while they are not unique in this, this is uniquely bad in the fact that they quite literally refuse to have you play the thing in your private server in the same way that, for example, people who were in the previous reactions I made about World of Warcraft with the Nostaria's um, um, server where <laughs> Activision Blizzard came down with the ban hammer. Yes, they certainly do want us to be comfortable with not owning our games. Oh, and by the way, you need an internet connection to play Shadow, so... Oh shit, wait, tell them they only need an internet connection to install the game. <laughs> Crisis averted. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The second reason gamers are upset is Ubisoft's pricing model. Pre-order Assassin's Creed Shadows coming yeah. November 15th. Excuse me, have you pre-ordered yet? Pre-order now. Watch this trailer and don't forget to pre-order. Play three days early by pre-ordering any premium so edition. Dumb. What the fuck is Amazon Luna? Max with silicon? What the fuck? Pre-order now to get a bonus quest. Discover the gold and ultimate editions. Discover them. Pre-order. Learn more about how you can fucking pre-order it a hundred times. Statue's kind of sick though. Yeah, so for the same reasons people were upset with Outlaws, this pricing model is just not cool it's not very bushido of you well at least they do have the the parrying <laughs> the hand guard there that's the thing that usually people uh, uh collect my dad has a bunch of those but not the sword itself it doesn't matter it will make you look like the uh, the ultimate weeb <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. It's just hilarious to me that they're selling that as collectibles. You, Ubisoft. Now, apparently Shadows is like the number one pre-order game in Japan right now. I don't know how true this is, but if so, this is why we can't have nice things. Remember, no Never pre-order. Pre There's literally no point to it anymore. And also, like, a season's pass for a single player game. Are we in 2016 right now? What What's happening? We're Remember what I said about uh, Fire Cry 6? Yeah, don't trust them. Really going back to this? I can't think of any other game that still does a season pass. I just feel like there's something inherently scummy with opening up purchases for a game without showing any actual gameplay. So exactly. Yeah, both Outlaws and Shadows are monetized in the exact same way and nobody really likes it. Next reason. People are kind of bored of Ubisoft's game design. The huge open world filled with the same copy and pasted missions and side quests with tons of busy work and tedious grinding. Ubisoft's game and open world design is just too safe and by the books. And they have a bad habit of stretching out their titles to be way longer than they should. In fucking deed. Listen, 
especially with Valhalla. I am one of those individuals who care about the stories in games excessively, to the point of going to try to play every single side quest to figure it out. Look, as an example, a game that literally hates you in the way that you are supposed to be playing it, right? Dragon's Dogma 2. It doesn't give a shit about how you are going through the game. It's wonderful. I like it. It's one of those old school kind of ways of, uh, hello, you need to talk to people, NPCs, discover things if you want to actually unlock quests. It's nice. You want to know how much time I spent into it? 176 hours I spent playing this game. You can design a massive game that literally has no mounts, that does not incentivize quick and fast progression with a little mini map that has small dotted lines that direct you exactly where you need to go, and make it more interesting than freaking Assassin's Creed where you need, I'm sorry, where you need to spend a hundred hours to get through the entirety of England to get access to King Alfred to reach the end game. That's wild. They, <laughs> they have this thing going on with them where they are just stretching out their games to make sure that they can file a lot of player engagement at the end of their yearly reports because that pleases uh, the numbers. It's literally a thing that you can watch when you're going through the earnings reports. It's wild. I hate that game design. You should never have to do that. And I'm not one to constantly laugh on the fact that immersive sims or better RPGs do it best if you can consolidate things within a smaller area and just pack it full of content. But no, I, I'm not just gonna say that because there's a taste for every type of gamers out there. And I've seen a bunch of engagement in the Valhalla community, especially when it came to like solving riddles and stuff through that community. So it's fine. People can do that. However, you should never have to go through a hundred hours to complete just the main part of a game. Fuck me, man. No. So this does kind of tie in with their reputation thing, but the earlier Assassin's Creed games took place in cities that were more condensed, which made a lot of the activities and the story, you know, closer together. A lot of it was still copy and pasted, but you didn't have to run so far to get to the next side objective or whatever. With their more recent titles, Ubisoft has been stretching out the runtime and the size of the open world, and it's not really making the games any better. It's the same it's reason a lot of people prefer Banjo-Kazooie over Tui. I myself am a hardcore Tui stand, but I get it. So fans are likely worried that this game will follow the same generic formula. I it also plays a lot into the whole discussion that we've had for damn nearly a decade now of you're no longer playing as an assassin in an Assassin's Creed game. It's more about the digital tourism. They realize that it's a big selling point for people to be able to see themselves or uh, explore new places into nations, countries, areas that they've never visited before. So they're going to focus on that and making those massive worlds. But it kind of defeats the idea of being an assassin, you know. Because sure, you can travel in long distances to kill a single dude, but if he's only surrounded by like a handful of people, then what's the point? When you do that in cities where you actually have to plan a lot to, con to conduct an assassination, then it becomes a lot more interesting. That's one of the things that I do not understand that it did not keep from Unity once they decided to go in that route of making things, for example, a one-to-one -one scale. It was a wonderful idea. They should have just stuck at that, and especially with the amazing parkour mechanic that that thing had, where you actually could plan on different angles. Yes, the game did tell you, you can access a place here, go through this roof, there are multiple entry points. Kind of a guided hand, but that was still better <laughs> than what we have now, in my opinion. I hope not. Now, with all this in mind, you can see how there's automatically a bias against whatever Ubisoft releases, because people simply do not have faith in them. They have a long history of anti-consumer practices and absurd monetization. But let's move on to the more controversial angle. Are gamers mad because Yasuke is black? Yes. Black! Did you say black? You called him black? He Absolutely. Said, oh, he said it again! I mean, yeah, for some people, they're happily taking this opportunity to post racism. I mean, why wouldn't they? 
If you're a racist, you just got some great content to work with. Jeez. We're finally going to Japan. Oh, Mighty Keith. <laughs> and I still gotta see you niggas. Whoa. What? Whoa, what? Oh no, the freezer came out of him real quick. Oh no. <laughs> I need to watch this. What the hell? Oh, whoa. The problem with trying to figure out who's trying to make a genuine point and who's just like taking this opportunity to be racist, it's like a guessing game, you know? Assassin's Creed Shadows, George Floyd skin. Yeah, that's enough talking about that. Um, <laughs> hopefully. Historical accuracy makes zero sense in AC. Seriously, come on, guys. This is only a small part of why gamers are mad. So there's two protagonists, the first one being Yasuke, who is a historical figure, a black samurai, allegedly the first black samurai in Japan, the first foreign samurai, in fact. And the other is Nawe, a shinobi assassin. Now, Yasuke has been portrayed in a bunch of other media, but I've never seen any of these other shows or games generate even a fraction of the controversy that Shadows has. Why not? when none of those were historically accurate either. Like the Yasuke Netflix show was so anime, it fucking hurts. Like I got to see less surrealism in something like Samurai 7. Like, <laughs> come on. Star a native Japanese man. This is a good question and one certainly worth lifting an eyebrow. To my knowledge, most Assassin's Creed games star a fictional protagonist native to the setting, with any real historical figures being side characters or villains. And if I'm not mistaken, Shadows is the first game where you both play as a historical figure and it's someone not native to the setting. Um, that, that's not even true though. Edward from Black Flag was also non-native to the setting. Yes, and if you even want to argue the whole thing of like pirates obviously were in the West Indies and formed a crew there, like you have literally Atebai, not Adewale. Adewale is the protagonist from Assassin's Secret Freedom and the uh, quartermaster of Edward's ship. He was born in Trinidad. You can argue about that if you want to, but if you are like some people who commented in um, the video that I reacted to Mudahar on a person like myself that oh I'm not Danish because I wasn't born here despite the fact that I live here my entire life but that, that's fine it's fine if that's your standpoint fine Adewale is not from the West Indies you have characters like Atebai a literal native to the land who has the assassin's order who trains Edwards and Adewale in the ways of the assassins and Mary Reed why not play as him if that's your point? And once more, you have our thanks, Edward. You are welcome here. Thank you, sir. Who do we have else? Assassin's Creed Valhalla that I talked about before. It's that game. You play as a literal Viking coming to England who learns about the culture, the rituals, how your religion conflicts with, with theirs, they call you a pagan, this and that, and you are literally an invader who comes to conquer the land. What are people talking about? And plus, this is not even the first time that we get to play as a native from a land. Uh, the DLC from surprisingly one of the better DLCs from Assassin's Creed that they've put out there in Syndicate as Jack the freaking Ripper. Have people forgotten about him? These two points have made some gamers suspicious of Ubisoft's intentions. Are they really choosing Yasuke because it's the best decision creatively and narratively? Personally, I think the idea has a lot of potential, but we'll talk about that later. The point is that some people see this as like a diversity checklist or something along those lines. However, like I said, Nawe is also native to Japan. No, no, no. no. So there is a native character no, that she's you can a play woman. as. But unfortunately, she's a woman. And women aren't real people. Right, fellows? <laughs> yeah, this is something that a lot of the culture warriors online are not highlighting that there is a native protagonist. So I personally don't see it as such a huge issue. I think all of the other pricing stuff and everything else that's wrong with Ubisoft is much more important to me. I, I got a bunch of comments regarding this whole thing when I initially reacted to it, and none of them stood ground. The whole thing about historical accuracy makes zero sense when in the literal intro of the game, you have the famous words, this work of fiction is inspired by some historical events and made by a team of multi, a multicultural team or whatever. 
literally stands on every single AC game. You know what it sounds like? <laughs> when we're discussing this uh, historical accuracy thing, in Assassin's Creed 3, the literal intro where Desmond's dad is describing the events of the previous game up until the whole conspiracy theory of the world ending in 2012. That's literally what it sounds like. You know, let's open Assassin's Creed 3 and listen to that statement because it's bloody hilarious. Few moments. Inspired by historical events and characters. This work of fiction was designed, developed, and produced by a multicultural team of various faiths and religions. <laughs> yes, I got the remastered edition. Bite me. Used to be when people talked about the end of the world, we locked them up. Or laughed them off. Sometimes both. But we never took them seriously. Maybe we should have. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Better to start at the beginning, with the abduction of Desmond Miles, my son. This boy had no ambition, no direction, no plans for the future. What he did have was a heritage, one he chose to deny. It nearly cost him his life. Of Sturgo. He was captured and imprisoned. Those who took him believed he could help them find something. The apple. One of several artifacts we call Pieces of Eden. Bits of ancient technology scattered across the globe. Some hidden, some found, all of them dangerous. When Most are held by a single group. That. The same group that now had Desmond. You know them as Abstergo Industries. We know them, we know them as the Templars. As the enemy. We've been fighting them for thousands of years. Even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. I do. After all, I've seen the truth. I've seen the truth. That's the beauty and the horror of the animals. I've seen the historical accuracy. A device that allows us to enter and experience the lives of our ancestors. It holds the power to change everything, to show us history the way it really happened. <laughs> Up until its creation, to the victor went the spoils, went the truth. We're trying to fix that, to free minds and bodies both. But there's only so much that we can do. And the Templars have the upper hand these days. Gonna but free you from the DI. The assassins and Templars is approaching. Bigger than all of us. And if we can't find a way to stop it, these next few weeks will probably be our last. The woke mind virus is gonna take you home. <laughs> They've been guiding. Yes, my game with the ancient aliens. Where Adam and Eve are literally the first assassins. Stand at his side, ready to support him, however we can. Yeah, they did my his boy name Desmond dirty. His Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. Yeah. Anyways, you understand the point that this is historical fiction. Therefore, it sounds so freaking odd to talk about historical accuracy here and that is even if you remove the whole ancient alien part of things because it makes literally no sense you have fucking Ezio in was it in uh, not revelation sorry perhaps in brotherhood where he plays as an mos 19k literally controls a tank no I wish I could keep you. What? Made by Da Vinci, one of those side characters that are supposed to be historically accurate? What? I think all of the other pricing stuff and everything else that's wrong with Ubisoft is much more important to me as a gamer and not a culture warrior. Now, some folk will say, well, why not just go play Ghost of Tsushima or Sekiro or any other of the hundreds of Japanese samurai games that star a Japanese guy? Well, I think Assassin's Creed fans just want that same thing for their own franchise. Sure. For some people, I don't think it's really all that complicated. But then again, Ubisoft games are already too safe, so would it be too safe of a direction to just star a random Japanese guy? I don't know. People see Yasuke as evidence that there's an agenda being pushed, and while that could very well be the case, a lot of the people saying this right now are already saying this about 
a hundred Every, different other things. things. Everything else has to be pushing an agenda when, you know, your content is based around that. Uh, like, how many posts do you have to make about the same bloody topic every single... Like, on a two days margin. Uh, uh, just imagine for, for a moment, waking up every day to go to a channel for a person to tell you what to hate. Like, what do they actually like? What do they actually like? It's it's weird to me, man. Like I know the drama farming is a is an easy thing. It, we literally have an inclination towards more bad things to think negatively, and that's why a lot of people click on stuff like that. And perhaps perhaps even me reacting to this video right now is part of the problem. But that to, to make that your entire shtick is all to me. And I hope that they have some joys in the free time. For me, whether or not it's woke or pushing an agenda is going to come down to the writing and the storytelling, as it always does. Of I course. I think there's a really good example in the Battlefield 5 trailer. Oh where yeah, this travesty. it's much more clear that something else was going on. It's actually the perfect counterpoint. Battlefield 5 is set in World War II and you want to have female representation? Lucky for you, Plenty there were like of a women. million female snipers in the Russian army. Yeah, I mean, you even had the Air Force. Literally, that were from England that of course mainly operated as a, a, a healthcare unit they were the nightingales that's what they were called but they also aided in combat you even have that in Italy the uh, rebel armies that also had snipers and uh, uh, anti-mine units like plenty of women representation and in the Russian one there's this lady who lost a, or almost lost an eye she looks fucking badass she made it through the entire thing there's plenty of that. I think Call of Duty actually had a female protagonist in one of the campaigns, right? Was it in Vanguard? I want to say it was in Vanguard, but I might be wrong about it. But yeah, you could do that if you wanted to, but not in the way that you depicted that in the freaking trailer. And I think that most people loved the fucking fact that you could play as a Japanese woman with an AK or an M1 Grand with a katana and everything in multiplayer. It was fun. We can do that. But when you're depicting what we think is the campaign through your trailer, it sends the wrong message. But no, have this like weird British lady with a robot claw who keeps dying and coming back and is... So I think Battlefield 5 is more of a relevant example where you can extrapolate some kind of agenda being pushed. But you also have to remember that when Battlefield 1 was announced and people saw the cover art, they also had the same complaint. Why is there a black guy on the cover? Then the game came out and it was a fucking masterpiece and nobody ever talked about that again. Exactly. And mind you, if we go back to Assassin's Creed, the voice actor for Bayek was uh, also the subject of uh, quite the travesty when the game was announced because there were complaints over the fact that oh the characters were not emmy enough by the way that is a uh, term that is used to describe uh, egyptian people because well the term literally means weight colored so that's usually what the color of skin that they're usually depicted as which I don't know how much you need to have that depicted in AC Origins as they don't have my complexion. A lot of Egyptians that I know look like this. And if you even wanted to make a case for that, there was literally the possibility of having a character that was that in the form of Aya, Bayek's wife, who actually was very well fitting with the time period of the Greek invasion, uh, was half Greek and half Egyptian. But you know why she did not become the main character of the game? Because uh, the producer thought that it would have been a bit too much of a bad reaction following the fact that uh, she was a female. So you literally cannot win in these kind of discussions, even though those were far removed from the culture war that we have today. And as a secret origins is regarded, regarded as being a great story and Bayek is now a beloved character. Yet still, when the trailer was announced, uh, yeah, it did garner some uh, wrong attention. Yeah. Something similar kind of happened with the Fallout show. There was this initial reaction to the trailer where they're like, oh, it's woke. Fallout's been destroyed. 
oh, it's terrible. And then the show came out and most people loved it. And most of the complaints people had with the show the lore. Were around the lore and how yeah. that was handled. So I think a lot of the people calling it woke and all that are just jumping to conclusions because that's kind of what their content revolves around. The next reason gamers are upset. Assassin's Creed Shadows isn't historically accurate. If you said something along these lines and you genuinely believe this statement, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt right now, and I think you're mistaking historical fiction for historical accuracy. They are not the same thing. No. Nope. Again, going back to Battlefield 1 and 5, historical accuracy is, okay, we've got this game set in World War II. Are we trying to make it feel like World War II? Are we trying to make it feel like World War I? The historical accuracy conversation is usually reserved for games that are like recreating battles that actually happened. Are the dates of certain invasions in World at War correct? Was there actually a battle on Peleliu? That's historical accuracy. Historical fiction is the story inserted into that setting. Yeah. Like I said, when you're watching a trailer for a World War II game and some cyborg lady shows up, your brain is like, hmm, that shouldn't be there. And you feel weird. This argument does not apply to Assassin's Creed at all. In fact, that's like the entire point of the Assassin's Creed stories. Is we will literally just watch the intro of Assassin's Creed 3. This is the history you haven't been told. Here's the real truth. And I've always felt Assassin's Creed was cathartic because you get to indulge in a conspiracy theory and see it presented to you. You get to watch it play out in the past and in the present. So Assassin's Creed not being historically accurate is like the fucking foundation of their story. It's like the premise of the entire franchise. So if you're complaining about historical accuracy, still at this point, um, it's hard to believe you have any experience with this franchise. <laughs> right, here's another example. JFK getting assassinated. But Neo was made by a Japanese studio, yeah. <laughs> That's a historical event. The way Umbrella Academy handles that historical event is historical fiction. It's taking this thing that happened or existed and creating your own story involved with it. And one of the comments that I got from uh, the, my initial reaction to this was the only honest comment that I got there, where the guys just simply wrote that it felt weird to play as a Japanese, uh, as a black man, an African man in Japan because he wanted to play as a Japanese guy. To which I'm like, that's fair. I applaud you for at least being honest. Even though the character was historical accurate, I, f I believe that he wrote. And that's fair. That's not what you're used to see in your <laughs> samurai media. I personally think that it has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of I'm going to bring race into the issue here. White people have an easier time to project themselves into, let's say, white passing characters or even Asian ones. From a lot of people who've been watching a lot of animes, let's be honest, that's an easier thing, to, an easier task to do than if you are a black person. Like, predominantly, name any shows where we got to truly experience that beside the likes of, let's say, Naruto where there's literally an actual village of shinobis that are black. Beside that, there are very few, despite the fact that there have been attempts made for including such characters with Afro Samurai, Samurai 7, I think I mentioned before. So I understand, and it's a fair point to bring forth. But don't start arguing about the historical accuracy of a character in a game like Assassin's Creed. Therefore, Yasuke not being uh, historically accurate as a samurai is completely irrelevant because this is a fictional story in a real setting. It's historical fiction. Now, if we get a new trailer for Shadows and we see like samurais with jetpacks, you know, you guys are going to have a oh, real argument pack, to samurai. make. But, wait a minute. <laughs> jetpack, jetpack, jetpack. Jet Has oh. it been done before? Oh my god, it has! Another reason gamers are upset with Shadows. Yasuke wasn't a samurai. This is pretty much just arguing semantics because we just established that Assassin's Creed is built on historical fiction, not historical accuracy. So whether or not he was is completely irrelevant. Personally, because his origins and his early life and even his original name are still unknown to us, from a narrative perspective, this opens a lot of doors creatively because you can come up with your own story about his life. Whether it's done well or not, and it's written in a compelling, interesting way, remains to be seen. 
and that will be the determining factor on whether or not we look back on this game as something that pushed an agenda and fucking sucked because it compromised its writing for that, or a story that was genuinely interesting because it presented this historical figure and wrote a story around them within the setting of Assassin's Creed. Also, the thing about Yasuke, again, because he's very mysterious, is that he could have also worked as a side character or even a villain. When I saw this shot of him in the trailer with the flames, I was like, yo, he would be a pretty fucking cool villain, just visually, yeah. like the one black samurai. But then again, people might criticize Ubisoft and be like, oh, just the one black samurai, you decide to make a villain. A villain. No, they wouldn't. And if they do, they're dumb because it's literally a thing that he played as in Neo. He was an antagonist to begin with, then he became a play playable character in Neo 2. So you're gonna have people talking shit no matter what. At the end of the day, what matters most is if the game is good, right? Yeah. And if it's monetized properly. You know, what would be really funny though, is to make an Assassin's Creed game where it's set in a certain place and nobody is native. Like if they were all Mexican sombrero wearing uh, samurais, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I want to see a game where everyone is just an unapologetic stereotype. So when it comes down to it, there are some valid questions to ask about Ubisoft's intentions. But I think the debate around whether Yasuke was a samurai, whether they're putting in a black samurai to get, you know, better DEI points or whatever. I think that conversation is not as important as how they're monetizing it and what else Ubisoft is doing and all the anti-consumer stuff. Hell Remember yeah. guys, no pre-orders, okay? But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with what I had to say? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. And yeah, I fully agree with just about every single point that he made there. And I would even have been very excited to see what direction the game was going to go with if it wasn't for the fact that it was made by Ubisoft. I'm not having any hopes nor any expectation about this. If it comes out, and it's good and it gets put down to half price i will get the game that being said guys thank you so much for checking out this reaction as always if you liked it don't forget to hit that like button go and subscribe to the yak man if you want to and of course subscribe if you want to see some more from here that being said we should all have a wonderful day see you guys in the next one bye